Okay, I think you look good. Mr. Bizzle, I thought this was the safe space. All right, sorry for the interruption while we set up equipment, but this store is wicked good and I'm very into it. Um, so we're just calling this, uh, hang on a second, let me get my equipment and we'll do a, uh, we'll do a, uh, this, this is the episode of, uh, here's some candy comic, get in my car. <laughs> Better stand up, and our guest is Chad Ryden, who uh, is a Chad that once we knew Chad Shank and I was calling him all the time, well, Chad Ryden was the only Chad in my phone, so he didn't have to have a last name. And then so when Chad Shank came underneath Chad Ryden, so I was calling him all the time, going, oh, we're going to do a podcast or whatever. And he's like, it's me again. It's Tennessee. Yeah. Chad Ryden. <laughs> Nothing more disappointing than getting a phone call from one of your favorite comics and then being like, uh, uh, did, did, are the wings ready? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Doug, do you want to do a show or something? Ah, uh, wrong Chad. Well, <laughs> fuck me. Wrong Chad. This is a wrong Chad podcast. <laughs> Welcome, wrong Chad. Yeah. Uh, so, Chad, uh, I've known forever from Tennessee. You, you are, are the king of the Tennessee scene. Shit. The locals. You know, the I, local guy. I, I don't take any... Don't, don't blame me for any of that shit. But, yeah, I, I, I worked on actively developing the Nashville comedy scene for like 22 years before I got the fuck out of there. Like in twenty two. All right, twenty two, and you you have gone and done what I think is absolutely fascinating. Uh, I don't know if you've ever saw the the scene of the the uh, documentary off the grid. Uh, uh, Life on the Mesa. Yes, that's about my neighborhood. Yeah, that is where, that is where I live. That's the place. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I'm sure you can you can find every documentary now. It's streaming online somewhere. There's a website. It's, yeah, it's somewhere. It's yeah, life off the grid, and it's so that's the, that's the shit. Yeah. So they filmed that in my neighborhood, uh, Two Peaks area, Carson Estates, uh, Taos County, uh, about like 16 years ago, and I know a couple people in that film that are still alive. Everybody else, like other than, every, other than two people, everybody in that film is dead, um, which like is all crazy. Comics. Do I, like all good comics. All good comics, yeah. yeah most so, are dead. I mean, these people, like, in, in, I, so I'm told that, like, they played it up to the camera, but if you watch this film, it's like people shooting guns indiscriminately, setting cars on fire, blowing shit up, and just being insane. Now, and that's, uh, that's what it is. How would those people view Slab City? If any of you guys have any questions about this, stop this fucking podcast right now yeah. and go watch. These off the grid. This is not. Oh, we get solar and we moved a little bit out off a rural route. This is middle of nowhere. I've never been to, and I've been to like all the back roads of Nevada. But that's some hilly shit. That's yeah. It's so like there. There was a land scam in the 1950s, and this is pretty common, I guess, around Arizona and New Mexico. There's like four that I know of where somebody bought up all this useless property where you can never have water, you'll never have electricity, sewage, or roads, and they bought it for like pennies an acre. And then this dude like divided it up into quarter acre lots, had them all deeded with the county, and then this, he w literally went to the 1963 World's Fair, and he set up a booth, and he's like, you know, he had all these pictures of, because Taos County is gorgeous. There's the Pueblo, there's the river, there's rafting, there's elk hunting, there's all this shit. But then... We're in the on the other side of the ravine, on the other side of the gorge, the Rio Grande Gorge, inaccessible. So it's like two hours to get to Taos at that time. And so he's like register to win, enter to win this luxury vacation resort. Build your dream cabin off the you know out the middle of nowhere in the wilderness of Taos County, but right next to the plant, all this stuff. And literally, I mean, so people would enter. And surprise, surprise, every single straight white male who already owned a home. In 1963, magically won, and they got this thing in the mail that says, "You've won beautiful vacation plot in Carson uh, Estates, uh, Taos County." And then, uh, but if you want to upgrade, it's a quarter acre, and it's fifty dollars to register the deed in your name. Well, it costs like, at that time fourteen dollars to do that, and so he's already tripled his money just by giving this away to it's, it's like the bookers that used to charge comics to look at their tape. That's yeah, right. you, know, you, you want to work here? Send me a tape and $25 for me to look at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a transaction, buy yeah. forever. Yeah, So, but he was like, if you want to upgrade, there's a three quarters of an acre around you and you can get each of those quarter acres for 50 bucks each. So some people did, some people stuck with their quarter acre, but then they started driving out there to see what they got. 
And like I say, it took two hours to get across the old bridge to get over to this area. And they would show up and literally be like, there's nothing, they would expect a lodge and like neighbors <laughs> building their off the grid homes, like and off the grid in the sixties is way different than it is now. Like you're literally building a rustic cabin or whatever. Yeah. But nobody was out there. It's yeah, just it's, dirt. It's, off, uh, it's not even there's Sage no grid yet. Yeah. Like, there's no there's, grid to be off of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like people would be like heartbroken, they'd realize they got scammed, they'd drive back to Taos and get a hotel room and then they'd never come back again. And they'd either just let it go. Or they would pay the uh, property tax on it, five dollars a quarter acre for years. And so, like, I bought my property from a lady who basically was a, a street urchin in San Francisco, and then she was following the Grateful Dead until Jerry died, and then she bought this property and posted it up, and she had this kind of weird hippie commune thing. All right, so well, before you bought this property, but before then you were in Nashville for Nashville years? for like twenty-two years and doing comedy. comedy, yeah, and, and, and developing was, the scene. What was the catalyst that made you go? I, I, we talked earlier where you go, you know, I, I've wanted to do this my whole life. Yeah. We talked about Boys Life magazine, yes. which we all remember. Yeah. And, uh, so there, there's like two parts to this, why I'm out there. So when I was a kid, yeah, I was a Boy Scout, Cub Scout, and they give you Boys Life magazine. So there's, it's propaganda. There's a lot of Boy Scout stuff. I was really into uh, wilderness survival. That's always been my thing. And camping, it's always been dope. But then there's a lot of rah rah America and God bullshit. Yeah, propaganda. it's a Boy Scout bag. It's a Boy Scout. Yeah, but but they would always have like once a year like you a couldn't big... call him Hitler. You think, <laughs> <man>? <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> so like they, once a year or so, they would have like this big photo spread about this camp Philmont in beautiful north central New Mexico. It's um, high adventure camping. It's hiking. It's rattlesnakes. Goddamn elk and river rafting and, and and like I was in three different scout groups and I talked to all of them. And I was like, let's go. And nobody wanted to go. They're like, you're annoying in the car for 10 minutes. We don't want to be in a car with you for two days. Fuck you. <laughs> you know, plus this is dangerous and expensive and far away. No. So no, I couldn't convince anybody to take me to this thing. Well, I've kind of forgotten about it. Fast forward to my divorce, uh, 2011. I'm in Tennessee. Uh, bankruptcy, foreclosure, divorce. My ex-wife has moved out of the house. And I'm sitting in the basement of my house. And I'm just sitting there. And I'm like, what the fuck do I want? Because it wasn't this. You know? What do I fucking want? And I was like, I just want a goddamn basement. Like, this is all I wanted is the fucking basement. And like every apartment I've had that was a basement was dope as shit. It's, it's cool in the summer. It's warm in the winter. Like it, it, every house I've ever lived in, I gravitate to the basement. I just want a goddamn basement. And I was like, still thinking in terms of living in a neighborhood where it's like, you go up to my lot. Honey, write up a deed for the crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move it today. Uh, I, I, I was still thinking in terms of living in a real neighborhood where it's like, you go up to my lot and it's just a garden and maybe a Doctor Who TARDIS in the middle, and you open up the door, and you go into the TARDIS, and it's a spiral staircase going down to my basement, and it's just a fucking basement. Then I was like, all right, but if you don't have sunlight, you're going to lose your mind, and I'm already crazy. People think I'm nuts. So it's yeah. like, maybe a swimming pool as a ceiling, and then I can look at butts and ah. the diffused light or whatever. But it's like, okay, this is dumb, because it's going to leak, and then it's going to destroy my home and flood it out, and everybody's going to laugh at me. What about what, okay? What if there's like gonna laugh at <laughs> what if there's like a south facing slope? I'm gonna catch on fire. I'm gonna put in solar. Oh, but then I catch on fire, and then I'd, I'd have no lips or nose because I would burn. And then everyone's gonna laugh at me. Like, <laughs> ah, then everyone's gonna how, shit on me. How awful the thing is! You're mostly afraid everyone's gonna laugh. At me. I don't want to give <laughs> comics ammunition. I'm already a target. And so <laughs> like, uh, then I was like, all right. Well, what if there's a south facing slope so I can do like glass wall, greenhouse, then I've got so, uh, passive solar. Yeah. I was like, okay, I want to build a hobbit house, right? Somebody else has done this. Who fuck? And so I started Googling, well, how do you build a hobbit house? And I find earth ships in Taos County. Mm. So this architect has been working for the last 50 years to develop this off the grid thing where you're basically building a man-made cave out of trash. It's tires and dirt and bottles and cans and um, upcycled materials, but he's building these beautiful structures that provide you food, water, shelter. They're completely off the grid. They process their own, um, your sewage, but it, you also grow food out of the, your, you know, it's a whole thing. It's everything I love. It's a goddamn hobbit house. Okay. And I was like, what? And so, I mean, I'm a comic and I, I, I know I haven't proved it to anybody ever, but I'm a comic, God damn it. <laughs> so I set up a uh, tour from Nashville, Tennessee to Las Vegas, Nevada down Interstate 40 just so I could spend a day in Taos and see if it was real or some Instagram bullshit. Yeah. And so like I did and I saw it and I was like, what the fuck? And when I got back to Nashville, I wouldn't shut up about Taos. 
And so this girl at the radio station I was working at, WXNA, uh, Ariel Buey, uh, I was like talking about the shit. She's like, well, I used to live in Taos. I used to work for Earthship. I've got property out there. You need to beat my boy Marcus, who's building one up here in Gallatin, pretty close to where Johnny Cash's estate is. So I started hanging out with Marcus. And uh, you know, he was 80% done with his. But um, you know, we would throw parties up there. Like we, we saw the eclipse there. We, we everybody forty people camped for three days. We all did mushrooms. Mostly we did mushrooms and tried to fuck hippie chicks. All right, but, <coughs> briefly, what uh, what's an earth ship? So it's like you're 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 using tires um, as bricks. So instead of getting materials and having them shipped to you, like tires are available around the world. Right. And so you get a tire and you uh, put cardboard in the bottom of it. And then you uh, fill it full of dirt, about three, four bit wheelbarrows full of dirt. And you sit there and pound it with a sledgehammer until it's so tightly packed that you can stand on it and it doesn't give at all. There's no squish. And you make sure it's level. And it'll weigh about 400 pounds when you're done. And then you live on top of that. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the whole house. But you, you keep building those. And you build them like bricks. And you usually have a curved wall. And then... Um, you, you stagger them back and you kind of plaster over it and you right. backfill and you've got a burn okay, behind it. It's a house. house. It's a house. Yeah. It's a, okay, You're building a man made cave on the trash. Yeah. Really okay. well insulated. But the ship sounds <laughs> like, uh, like a, you made a, some kind of. Were uh, you going to put a pond in yours? Uh, 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 like a water feature? Yeah, well, what you do is like, so the, you do rainwater collection off the roof, it goes into cisterns in the berm. Um, there's there's culvert going through the berm and poking through the back wall, so you have natural convection of cool air coming th air coming through, cooling off through the berm, and then venting out through the greenhouse facing south, so that you don't have a HVAC system, but you have naturally controlled. And so the reason they call it a ship is because it's a lot of rope rigging because they want to make it manual and not electronic. And so you can open and close vents uh, to basically control the airflow and the temperature of your house. And you can use like wax. It's um, kind of like Mad Max Road to Fury. It's crazy. There's a, a documentary. Fury Road. Fury Road. There's Not a documentary Fury. on Amazon called Garbage Warrior that explains everything. But if you uh, Google you Earth ships mm -hmm. and look at YouTube, there's thousands of videos, and there's million dollar homes that they've built that are just amazing. They're gorgeous. Just, just pieces of art. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's like have the whole jungle inside. Yeah. Like you, so you have a greenhouse mm -hmm. to absorb the heat. Yeah. And you could grow your own food. A lot of people grow weed or, or have ornamental stuff. But you can grow the fucking oranges out, in the desert. I don't want to run out of battery before oh, we right. get to murder. <laughs> yeah. So you find out uh, serendipitously <coughs> through your friend that, oh, yeah, I know everything about where exactly you're going to move to in the middle of fucking nowhere that no one knows about. So my friend Ariel was going to build her tire wall October of 21. And I took the month off of everything, and I just came to New Mexico to do that with her. And I was there five minutes before I was like, I got to buy property here. This is the shit. And because it's all off the grid, it, it, it's outlaws. There's, there's people running from the law, but there's a lot of hippie chicks too. I'm surrounded by people with love in their heart who want to build sustainably, live off the grid, and have a cool community. And so, like, I bought my property there in December of 21, and I went back and forth from Nashville a lot. I would spend about a week there and then come back um, until about June of 22 when I moved there full time. And I'm, I'm, I'm living in a goddamn school bus in the middle of the desert, the high desert, West Mesa. So what, no, it's not like, give me the transition. Yeah. Like, what do you, okay, you because show up, like, you didn't have a school bus when you got there. No, you she, show up and the, you go. the previous owner had built like two shit houses, two, two shitters, like three sheds, and she had two school buses that were campers. And some other stuff too. She didn't really build very well. She saw what her ship was doing and she tried to do it herself, but she didn't like have any this training. This is the person you bought from. Yeah. Sweet lady. So this is what, oh, okay, you, this is your school bus, and I'm out of here. Yeah, she's gone. Yeah. So, so she, you mentioned Slab City. There's a lot of overlap between my community and Slab City. So she would always winter there. And a lot of right. people go back and forth from towns to Bisbee. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like I've got friends here in Bisbee who have places up in the Earthship community who just come down here for the winter because it's nicer, you know. So okay. um, anyway, yeah, I'm up there building my bullshit. I'm trying to build a, a traditional kiva, like the sunken circular like uh, ceremonial place that the natives have built. Uh, oh, quick question, you know, you started <coughs> building. Yeah. So had you studied this enough? Because you probably don't get YouTube out there on your first day. <laughs> no. So did you have to memorize YouTube videos before you start banging the tires and dirt together? I mean, I've got, I've got Starlink satellite internet, but there's like three internet service providers in Taos that I could get a direct line to if I don't. When it comes to living off the land, naked and afraid, I can't like get through the first commercial where yeah. I go, I tap out of yeah. naked and afraid. Well, so, people like the, no skills. The comics who've come to visit me have always been like, 
uh, this seems cool, but uh, and some of them have bought property near me, but like a lot of them are like, I couldn't do it, man. I need a, a flushing toilet. Like that's not it, dude. You don't need a flushing toilet. You, there's nothing about pooping into fresh water that you need. What you need is a goddamn shower. And after about three, four weeks, you're going to be like, yeah, no, nope. I need a shower. No, no, no the yeah. showers, uh, uh, toilet paper. That would be my thing. I mean, I've got toilet paper, but I'm shitting yeah. into a hole. You know, wet wipes are my friend, I'll tell you that. Right. Well, I guess you get a lot of roughage out there in your guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, okay, let's go that way. You, 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 so you figure out how to build your house, and you all going to get toilets and buses. Uh, food. What's it, what if you, if you go, uh, I failed, I'm hungry, I just want a frozen pizza. What's, how far is it from you to the closest processed food? 40 minutes. By uh, camel, car, yak back, car, <laughs> car. Oh, so you can but like, car in there. oh my god, yeah. Well, you it has to be four wheel drive. Like, my roads are mud, mm -hmm. uh, most of them are uh, cliche, which is like this chalky <clears throat> dirt that they've yeah. piled up. But it's, then it's um, called human waste, but you call it cliche, no, no, no. And but like, my, my road is completely ungraded uh, and it's just mud pits right now because the snow's melting and shit. Uh, so you have to have a four wheel drive vehicle with high clearance, or you're fucked. Right. You know? And and during monsoon season, sometimes you just sit there for a couple days, and you I don't go anywhere because I can't. You know. But yeah, I, I, I've got. Have you ever missed an important meeting? <laughs> <laughs> there are no important meetings. Here. I just I've engineered my life so I do whatever the fuck I want, whenever the fuck I want, and nobody tells me no, and I don't have to be anywhere or do anything. Yeah. If you had, uh, say, a young girl in a bamboo cage, yeah. and she's shrieking, help, help, get me away from this bald-headed crazy bastard, could anyone hear her scream? Sure. I've got neighbors, like, half a mile away. Right, that's what we would... My question was... I hear the schizophrenic happens. neighbor to my west screaming every... Like, he howls at the wind every day. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. But, like, I, I, like, we pay attention. So my neighbor just texted me that there's a fugitive on the run from the state police who's up on the mountain just uh, right, right next to my property. Uh, my neighbor to the north is the Carson National Forest and there's a guy on the mountain right there who's hiding from the law. Pulled a, put a rifle on this 10-year-old boy that's my neighbor when he was out there gathering wood yesterday. Three times he pulled a gun on him. Same. And Ruby Ridge. I mean, it's crazy. Like, there are people... It is the Wild West. There are straight-up murderers. There's meth heads. There's people on the run. But there's also... But they know not to fuck with us. So, like, my my friend Angie, right? Beautiful woman. Us meaning the community. Yeah. Like, not me and my dogs. Well, no. Like, me and my neighbors... Uh, we've got a good little. We watch out for each other. Yeah. And and if one of these motherfuckers like starts rolling up on my property, somebody's good. My dogs are gonna go ape shit, and my neighbors are gonna go ape shit. And I'll hear about it immediately. Like and plus, I, I do have video cameras set up. Like you know, but but like nobody's gonna nobody. Okay. Fucks. How do you, as a comic, you ingratiate yourself? <laughs> you're using like uh, okay, I'm gonna be funny. That's yeah. how I make friends, and uh, I'm known as a comedian at least. Yeah. And, like, how did you start to like? make a community of these people were they tentative about you at first they like who's the new prick well people are like that sure there's old timers who've been there from back in the day who like there's 80 year old dudes who've been growing weed out there for decades you know is there a community center do you go okay i'm here i got my fucking pup tent up mm -hmm. I ate my kind my of, lunchables, yeah. and where is the bar? So yeah, so uh, now when I started working on my friend Ariel's tire wall, like people would come and go because she was connected to the community, and I met this one dude who runs this nonprofit, Veterans Off Grid. So it's like a couple hundred acres, and he's he's keeping people from being homeless by teaching them how to build a hut out of hyper adobe nice. that's you know okay. maybe a hundred square feet, and you could do it yourself in two weeks and not be homeless. So like I volunteer there and I've built a bunch of shit there, like a wall peony and a earth ship and some other stuff. Um, and so like hanging out there and we have these volunteer Tuesday events. So every Tuesday we pick somebody's project, somebody who's building something similar and we just go and staff them up. So 15, 30 people show up and just help you for a day. And I so would, I would have a, a, you're not done on mine Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're not done here. I had other ideas. Go ahead. So I've met like all my friends and neighbors like, like that way. And then there's this Carson Cafe. Carson, New Mexico is the closest thing to me. So it's a 45 minute drive for me to get to the closest coffee shop. They've got beer. They've got pizzas. It's dope. And so people sit on the porch and they smoke their weed and we talk shit and we have fun. And so like that's a good community hub. Okay. So you don't have something that's your own off the grid like 
like, hey, well, let's meet up here. That's the closest Party. thing is Carson Cafe and then uh, the burger stand. Wait, so that, is that a legit cafe? Like yeah. that's a licensed place? Yeah. It's, so it's like Carson, New Mexico is basically a post office, a firehouse, and this cafe. Uh, and um, so like I hang out there a lot. And then there's the burger stand in Taos. And it's just a, they got 22 beers on tap. They got dope ass burgers. And I do a comedy show there once a month. But that's a community hub too, where a lot of us dirtbags are there just kind of hanging out, smoking weed, and trying to talk to uh, hot chicks who are there to ski. You know? <laughs> I have never, I can't believe I've never been to Taos. <clears throat> Taos in my, uh, uh, Santa Fe was one of my first gigs. I, yeah. all right, I saw it once, that's enough. Albuquerque's the ugliest fucking city in America. Yeah. Mexico's the ugliest people in America. Uh, it's not the worst state. It's no. in, in Indiana, but pound for pound. But I've never been like that middle of nowhere because I'm, I'm scared. But don't be scared. Twenty five mile an hour turns on fucking black ice and yeah. shit like that. That's That's right. Right. You fucking had a gig. He had a gig in Prescott last night. That's right. And he goes, okay, and then here today, and then Albuquerque oh, tomorrow, right. which is a 10-hour drive. I did not drive. Oh, he's not going to have any time at all here. I wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning to piss, and I look at my phone. He texted at 12.54. Uh, just, uh, I'm on my way now. I'll be there early in the morning. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? I like driving at night. There's not... The shitheads on the road. Plus, this is the weekend. I don't want to be on the shitheads on the road. There's fucking deer and antelope yes. and, uh, yes. and black ice and uh, I could dodge. Truck drivers. I, I, I can could drink at gigs anymore. I can dodge. I did. Well, I drank early and then uh, the. So I'm touring with a band right now. My favorite band. It's Indigenous Fate plus Bees and Locusts from Taos. They're dope. It's a seven piece punk band with a Indigenous rapper as the lead. And so, like, I drank before the show and then. Um, uh, then I danced, and so like I and I ate food, and so I was good to go by the time. Yeah, yeah, you know, I didn't take off till way after, but yeah, I'd rather drive at night. Yeah, fuck it. So where's the band staying? Oh, they had a place. They had a place. I I, I, I could have crashed with them. They all, you know, right. but yeah, they drove down during the day or whatever. All right. But yeah. anyway, so let's get back to now. You you you've been there almost two years now. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you learn you meet the psychotic neighbors and the yeah. cool neighbors, and you go mm -hmm. okay. I'm, I'm part of the clan now, clack, clack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Circle of wagons. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, I walked around armed for the first year everywhere I went because I didn't know who was who or what was what. For the first year, did you have that orange thing at the end of the, the barrel of the <laughs> gun so people know it's a tool? No, and it's not unusual. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not unusual to see people with a sidearm. Um, but then, like, I realized I, I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm going and I know who I'm talking to for the most part. But yeah, there is a straight up murderer in my neighborhood who has shot and killed people, and we don't know what to do about him. You know, I, I want to get him. I want to put a bounty on his head, but nobody else wants to. <laughs> shot and killed people elsewhere in that movie. No, right there. Like, so there was an altercation about a year ago where he shot and killed somebody and got away with it. He stole. There was this cute little girl, 21, and she was riding her little motor or dirt bike to work, and she was out on the road now. Um, Allegedly, we don't want no. this murderer to lawyer up and sue us for. Oh, he doesn't have any lawyer money. I, it was a joke. But yeah, it's a but the grid guy. This, this poor girl, girl, she her her little bike broke down, and so she was just walking to work. And a pack of dogs. There was wild dogs. There was like 40, 50 wild dogs that that came and swarmed on this girl and just tore her to shreds. Okay. And so somebody was driving down the road and they saw her and they chased the dogs off and they saved her life. Took her to the hospital, covered with scars. And she covered up her face. But um, this poor girl, so this motherfucker bought, sees her moped, her dirt bike on the side of the road and picks it up, throws it in his truck and takes it to his place and starts parking it out. And we are a small community. We know who the fuck did that. We see him. And so somebody called him out for him on, on Facebook, on the community Facebook group. And he's like, yeah, fuck you, you know? And so somebody had to go over there and get the bike from this motherfucker. And this girl took the bus to Espanola to get the parts she needed to fix her little thing. That's the kind of community it was. And, and like, we've put those dogs down since then, you know, but um, it's, this motherfucker is like a problem. Wait, and who did he murder here? And, well, he murdered somebody else. It was a different uh, story, <laughs> but I'm sorry. But, sorry like, but, but that's just an example of like this kind of shit bag. So he's got a tow truck and he, like, if you break down, you better spend the night in your truck because he'll fucking pick it up and take it off and part it out. Uh, for, is anyone else? Like, it sounds like a nightmare to me. But it's <laughs> wonderful. I love that. <laughs> I, I thrive in chaos, and I really <laughs> am in my element. Like I, I love it. I know I love the stories, but does, it, does the air get sucked out for anyone when they said, "Well, we went on our Facebook group." Our <laughs> Listen, 
Facebook group. I'm not a Facebook person, but like you know, these people, they, they're, 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 everybody in Towson's on Facebook, and so it's like I've got like a bullshit account where I can talk. Does Slab City have a Facebook? Account? I'm sure. Oh my know. god. Yes. Yeah. You it's can't funny. be off the grid anymore. Like I mean, you're off the grid. I'm not connected to municipal utilities. I'm still on the internet. Like you made fun of me. Like you start shitting on me on Twitter like a year and a half. Like you know, uh, off the grid. But he posts online more often than any other <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it's like yeah, but I mean like. I'm, I'm still, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm still a attention whore. That didn't change. You know? <laughs> what, if, what, if, uh, what if I got like a, a few people that are up for a goof, and we moved up there and bought our fourteen dollar plot of land, and uh, said, "Yeah, we're uh, we're, we're going to be the police." <laughs> we heard you didn't have police here, so uh, you get murdered you so sheriff. fast. No, I mean, the, 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 the people like to say, we don't call the police; we take care of our own. I, that's what you said, it, yeah. and that's why I said, "Oh, no, police." What if I can get a bunch of my, my crazy fans and we go, yeah, we decided you need police. We're cops. And, we're, and But then you go, oh, we're going to fucking team up and fucking kill these people. And you go, and we're hiring for really I'm good in. wages. And then all of a sudden, you're not off. Because we were born into police. Just yeah, yeah. that's a fact of life. Yeah. But at some point, they decided, hey, we, we're police now. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, like, the police are scared to come to my neighborhood. I've seen the sheriff out there twice. Uh, the house was on fire. And what happens, like, if somebody moves in and we don't like them, they'll burn their goddamn house down. So the Taos, Taos they're trying to build a... Wait, wait, is that what happened with our fire? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they, they're trying to build a Starbucks in Taos. Now, there's two inside... Uh, this is hilarious. There's two that are inside uh, Kroger-owned grocery stores, but they're building the first standalone... Uh, Starbucks and they burned it down twice. So they, they framed it and then somebody came in and burnt that shit to the ground. They cleaned up the mess, they framed it again, and somebody burnt that shit to the ground. And I'm so delighted by the whole thing because Taos isn't fucking playing this corporate bullshit. They don't want those motherfuckers there. We've got straight up anarchists all over the place and there's a coffee shop ran by anarchists. It's very open. And who knows who does this see, because it's a bunch of lone wolves. Fascinating to me. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's like it's literally I live in what's called the enchanted circle it's just like six ski towns <laughs> and it's all spiritual and shit the pueblo has been inhabited they, they say they've been there since the beginning of time it's the longest most continuously uh lived in structure in north america and um i mean it's just i i, I really love this, this gets whole us area. back to uh the guy that was bragging that well i i was I'm born and raised in bisbee i'm uh, what do you call yeah. it i'm a uh, native, native. In, yeah. 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 Well, you know what? That you're the only people that didn't fucking choose to be here. Right. You had no choice. So the uh, same thing with fucking Indians. Yeah. Fucking sacred, <laughs> sacred burial ground. <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad about my native <laughs> friends. I love them to death. I'm honored to be there. I'm. Yeah. I feel like I'm on. I'm trespassing, and I'm always. Uh, Do they make you feel like that? No. Do they go. Wow, you're welcome. fucking. You're living this. You're. you're people you're say bringing it real. I believe the kids say. People say the mountain accepts or rejects you, and uh, I, I, I'm I'm clearly very drawn to this place. So oh, I started saying like Boys Life Magazine, right? I started getting into that. So after I bought my property, I came and I, I gave the woman the money. I paid. I, I put the deed in the uh, courthouse, and I'm driving back to Nashville now because I still live there. And as I go over the mountain, I enter and I see this sign that says, now entering uh, Boy Scout property, P. Philmont uh, uh, Park. That's the place I've been trying to get oh, to yeah. since I was eight years old. It's literally on the other side of the mountain from me. I've been trying to get to Taos since I was a fucking child. And I didn't realize, I didn't piece it together until after I bought this property and realized, holy shit, like I've always wanted to be here. You're it's tearing up a little bit. I, I'm, I'm very emotional about where I live. Like, I've always been connected to my community. Like, I lived in East Nashville, and I know every motherfucker on my block. And I, I, I worked really hard community building. When I started comedy in Nashville, there was one open mic a week and one comedy club. But it was a good comedy club, but that was it. Now there's three full-time comedy clubs. There's three or four open mics a night. And there's two or three book shows outside of the club system. And I'm not saying I did that, but the nonprofit I ran, Nashville Stand Up, fucking did that. Me and my friends fucking did that. I'm yeah, a community I builder. And like I've always been tight with my community, but I've never been closer to my community than I am right now. Do you think you have enough clout in your community that you've moved into and seeming that if we came out and started a very small but lucrative Dollar Tree, <laughs> <laughs> it would get burnt down. Like nobody. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it would get burned down 
after they sell what they can get for only a dollar twenty five cents. You know, yeah, it's a tumbler. <laughs> when do we not need a tumbler? A dollar twenty five is like pocket change if I had pockets. I mean, there's only one way to find out. I'm building a comedy club at my place. My Kiva is going to be a comedy club, and I mean, and, and then so like, and I'm trying to. I, I really thought once I started building and posting about the shit online, my dirtbag friends who are van lifing it, you know, would come out of the woodwork and come and join my weird comedy commune. It's not a sex cult yet, but someday, <laughs> yes. but but like, uh, but I, but like, and people will come and visit and they'll help me out or they'll fuck around for a week. But nobody, hey, like, it hasn't become the cult I want it to wait, be. Wait, wait, you said uh, every time a comic has come out to visit me, I want names of what comics and what experiences specifically for each one. Okay, well, the, the first comic to visit me was Ryan Singer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's it's a, fucking weird. I think I was picturing him. So, like, he's into Paranormal. This his podcast is Me and Paranormal You. It's all about shape shifting. He's the one who's and, his eyes look just like Joby. I, 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 oh, I brought okay. pictures. I saw him at the comedy he's store. Very, very funny it. comic and yeah. uh, just a rogue warrior, and I've loved him forever. So he was the first to come out, and he was like, I'm going to buy property, and then he hasn't. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, of course... But then, like, uh, yeah, you keep paying them money to do comedy. to do other stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can drive away. That's the thing. It's like I can do shows if I want. I can drive. I go to Albuquerque and Denver all the time and uh, and do shit. Oh, please, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're a joy. I used that guy. But yeah, like I'll uh, like I'm, I'm focused on building my shit right now. But like every once in a while, I'll go off on a run of shows and I'll call it my um, uh, tax write off tour. Because it's like, I'll go visit, thank you, bless you. I'll go visit my daughter in Nashville and do like one show, you know, and then. How old is right your daughter? Off there, She's 20 years old. Okay, has she visited? She has came. So uh, when, I, uh, when I had, there was a dog fiasco I was talking about off camera, and she came with me, um, and she, like, when we got into Eagle Nest, and it opens up, and you see the lake, and then you see the mountains and all this shit, she was like, she gasped, and she was like, Dad. Like, I've seen your photos, I've seen your video, I hear you talking about this shit nonstop, but this is overwhelming. And I was like, I know. And we can't drive across this bridge, not on your mini <laughs> spare tire. Yeah. It's going like this. No, she was, like, I took her around for about three days and I showed her pretty much everything. And she was just like, God damn. Like, it is overwhelming. It's a, it's the ski capital of the world, it's the snow cap, uh, snowboarding capital of the world, and it is gorgeous. I mean, I'm, like, I'm in the middle of sagebrush, but... Like the 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 enchanted circle itself is like something of legend. It's really insane. Okay, um, so on, on your worst night, sitting there in your like, bus, igloo, or I'm on a bus. I'm on a goddamn school bus. All right, I don't know. Maybe you had a like a what do you call that? A yurt or something that you when you're on sad nights. What do you miss the most? Is what I'm getting at. Pussy on the nights. <laughs> there's oh, just gotten laid there once. Oh, ever? of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, there's. <laughs> You um, can't have a one night stand there because you're gonna run into her <laughs> right. over at the fucking. So the, the dating pool in Taos is very very shallow. I've I've uh, uh-huh. I've had a, a a few encounters there, but I'm driving to Santa Fe to fuck, and that's not sustainable. Like you know, I'm hauling every every drop of water I drink, and I'm hauling in every piece of ass, and like I, I it's not good. Like I'm I'm and I'm trying to like I, I had this Tinder date with a woman in Taos, and she made the comment. She's like, you can always get dick in Taos. And I was like, is that our town slogan? Like, we got to start marketing this shit to, like, people who've been slut-shamed elsewhere. It's like, come on, horse, Come on over to Taos. Come to Taos and we'll come on you. you know? Okay, so when you're in Taos, which is an upscale ski It's a market, ski resort place and okay, it's very expensive. so you meet a lady at uh, uh, your place or mine. Mm. <laughs> Her place. Yeah. And I, so I, I, I took, She just never like, oh, well, will you make me breakfast? Yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, I will. But somebody else is hut. And now I've had women, I have fucked in my school bus. I can say that. Oh. But in general, like, I do a lot of dog sitting and house sitting for people because... And I still can't get this thing out. <laughs> there's, there's so many, like, uh, Airbnbs, uh, as there are in every fucking city. I think Airbnb is the problem we have with our housing market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, and, and, and it's it's destroying our country, and Airbnb it's should nice. be outlawed, and all those landlords should be shot in the goddamn head. But You're, you're, you're th- staying in one. Yeah, I know. I know. Except, but, except we don't... And thank you. Yeah. But you, it's Airbnb for you. Yeah, yeah. Types, like, and thank you so much because that's the first shower I've had in two weeks. Yeah. But like, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll house it for people just so I can take a shower and do laundry and fuck people in a, a normal, nice house and not have to take them back to my school bus. Uh, wait, is this their call? Like, 
of Chad Ryden, we're going to let you house it as long as you do our laundry and no. fuck the p- people there for us. It's my laundry. They're not giving me people. No, you got it all twisted. Nothing yeah. <laughs> worse. It's what I do. <laughs> don't go out no, there. That cat and dog don't want to meet quite yet. Yeah, don't let them hang out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think he would want. Yeah, he, I mean, he would scramble, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun, dude, and you should come and do shows. Uh, uh, I think Sean Smith. Uh, no, what is, what's her last name? Australian chick. Yeah, is she coming? Uh, she says she is, and All so right. I'm gonna do a show for her. And I tweeted it wrong, right? Uh, I was wait, like, "Wait, hang on! You have to go all the way to Santa Fe, but now you're going all the way to Brisbane to get pussy." <laughs> she won't let you not fuck her. I mean, you yeah, know, if you if you listen to her podcast or watch her tweets, yes. She's a prostitute that doesn't take no for an answer, like a car salesman. Uh, that's yeah, and you. Oh, and all of a sudden she's playing jazz. Jazz. We've talked a good bit. Farmhouse. I think she's great. I I I, I, I really do f- think she's talented. Yeah. She is an insane person. Uh, and, uh, that's yeah, she, that's what I'm in the market she's for. Great. I, I love insane people. I'm one of them. But yeah, she's coming. Like I had uh, Ryan Singer, Jeff Tate. Um, Tate was out there? Yeah, uh, uh, Dave Stone and uh, Gilbert Walland, uh, and I, I, I How so did like, Tate take to it? Was, he enjoyed it. He had a good time. All right. He's not one of the, I need a like, running water. He guy. ain't buying, I don't think he's buying property out there. Like, uh, a couple comics have said, like, buy up a quarter, let me know, give me, give me a heads up and I'll send you money. And like, uh, a couple people have said, like, I want to, like, don't tell my wife but I want to buy a quarter acre as a bug out place. I'm like, okay, if I'm not telling your wife about your bug out place, we got deeper issues than trying to hide from whatever the fuck you're running from, you know? But like, uh, I, I don't know, like Trish Smart is a comic who has had van life. She's been doing comedy like six, eight years. You would love her. She's uh, she's sounds a familiar. fucking hustler. She's very, very funny. Van she's been, life sounds very funny. Yeah, she's she's uh, she she drives back and forth across. She spends a lot of time in Las Vegas and Washington D.C. and goes back and forth. But she travels the world doing comedy, and so she, I think she's gonna buy property out there. And there's a couple others too. Have any, has anyone come through to to buy? Yeah. Uh, n- no, I I've got a couple plots I'm sitting on where if, when people come up with their goddamn money, I'll give it to them. But you know. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, like Morgan Murphy kept talking about it. She did rent here down the. Oh, she would enjoy it. Uh, but I don't know. No, she's definitely. She she, she needs rent and water for yeah. sure. I mean, but the point is for us. Yeah. Like now we have like Christine Levine. She yeah. she lives here uh, with Gary Lucy. Uh, yeah. If you know him from uh, the Pacific Northwest, he's moved down here. And we've had a few uh, people that were not comics that have. Uh, so I'm trying to replicate your thing here, but out there. Yeah, that's a harder sell. We have a safe way. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I've got a super save. It's just 45 minutes away. Yeah, that's. We have an airport 45 minutes. <laughs> hour 45 minutes. But you get it's 20 minutes to get through the mud roads to the community well, to the highway, to the pavement from my place. 20 minutes, uh, minimum. Like, if it's fucking monsoon four, season, you may four, never four get it. Four days. Yeah. Yes. I mean, but... It's 20 minutes and days. But that's, you know, and the roads are bad, and they get to, they tear up your truck, but I hitchhike in and out of town all the time. And I can get a ride within usually five to ten minutes, in or out. That's great. And it's a, it's pretty amazing. Like, I, I've done videos, I've done TikTok videos where it's like, how long does it take me to get a ride to Taos? And it's literally like eight minutes tops. That's uh, my next question, the off the grid... Uh, you already answered as I was setting it up was what do you do with all this time out there? But evidently you just sit on Facebook and TikTok. No, nah, dude. Like I, uh, I, I mean, I used to, but like when I was uh, like in Nashville on the grid, like yeah, I'm on a fucking computer all day, checking off and day trading and you know watching movies and playing video games. But like sun, I wake up with the sun and I work until the sun goes down. And usually people, like about one, two in the afternoon, people want to have like lunch and uh, like anywhere I work or, or help, like there's a vegan lunch and then we all, they have river fun. So people go down to the river and they swim and it's like, it'll be like 15 hippie chicks and like three dudes and everybody's naked and we're in the river. And then you go to somebody's house and they uh, jam and it'll be like nine people playing instruments, everybody's smoking weed, some people have alcohol. And you have a little fucking thing. It's a tight ass 
community yes. and life. But then I can also sit at home. What's the first uh, social faux pas you made where you go, ooh, uh, oops. Yeah. Oh, it's all like the squabbles between me and my, my friends let, out there. Let me, let me just tell that my, when I, the one I remember most is I was road raging at the Vista, which is a quaint little fucking rich. It's a, and I passed someone that was going too fucking slow. Like if a red, I pass it at the tennis courts. Like, oh, God. <laughs> This is 15 mile an hour. Fuck you! you go. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. And then they're behind me at Safeway. And you go, oh, this, I can't ever do this again. <laughs> yeah. In this small town now. It's not Los Angeles. <laughs> for, for us, like, it's, it's criticism about uh, how sustainable you're being. So it's like, yeah. you're not doing this good enough, is what I'll hear. And it's not, not, not necessarily about me, but other between people. So it's like, God damn, I'm growing my own food. I'm shitting in a goddamn bucket like a cat. Like, <laughs> how, how sustainable do I have to be to fucking make you people happy? Like, that's what, where it's like, God, fuck, you know? Like, eating meat is my biggest sin, honestly. Like, people will give do you, you shit. Do you have to hide it? Like, no, I fucking like, grill. Like Dan Aykroyd with the salmon in Trading <laughs> Places. I'm not, I'm not giving up my Nashville hot chicken. I grill like a motherfucker all the time you smell meat at my place. But Do you raise chickens? No, I, I will. Like, I, I had chickens for a minute, mm -hmm. and, and then I realized nice. it's like, uh, I'm in a school bus, and I don't have water that doesn't freeze for my dogs. Maybe not have chickens yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, build your house before you start fucking building a chicken house. So I get I, I donated the chickens to Veterans okay. Off Grid, but um, if this murderer I, disappears, are we gonna have to pull this podcast out? Nah. <laughs> nah yes. Yeah. yeah, we know those people that if they died in this town, no one's looking. I do want to say I did not burn the Starbucks down. I cannot condone arson, but it is <laughs> very funny. Um, and but yeah, like you know, people. My my neighbor Claire uh, ended up dead and was in the river. And people jump off the bridge all the time. Like hers was unusual circumstances. I don't know all the details. It's weird. There's there's people who've been murdered that are unsolved in my neighborhood. And you know we don't know. But like if somebody's house burns down, it's fucking intentional. It's not electrical in your attic. It's we don't want you in this goddamn community and your shit is burnt to the ground. Build it again. We'll fucking burn it again. And this uh, podcast is sponsored by State Farm Insurance. <laughs> State Farm. <laughs> you have a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's self-policing. I mean, they say that and it's, it, it's true to an extent. Now, this motherfucker's still out there, but um, I'm getting ready to put up wanted posters where I'm going to offer a dollar for his head. Kelly here, <laughs> she uh, was talking as we were leaving the uh, yard sale. She said... Uh, yeah, we need to get a hot tub. I like hot tubs yes. better than sauna. It's like yes. hot tubs. It's like people soup. That's, <laughs> what, that's all I can think of when you said that girl was found dead in the river that you party in every day. You, oh, they found her body dead, but party's still on. Let's party's wait gone. out there. Yeah, it's tough, dude. Like people do die, you know, and people. It's it's um, it's why it's the fucking wild west for sure. Do you hate uh, tweakers as much as we do here? Yeah. Oh, I was getting ready to tell you. So my friend, okay. So my friend Angie, beautiful woman. She's my age. She's like 40-something. Um, petite. And she's built like several structures. There's a guy here in town, Kenny, and he goes back and forth. He's helped her a lot. Um, anyway, she's a community organizer. And she's a wonderful woman. And uh, so like some tweakers set up shop like across like, from her shit. And they're squatting. On, on, on land that you know nobody's really taking ownership of. And at first it didn't matter. If you don't bother anybody, nobody gives a fuck about you. But more and more people started showing up and they started getting louder and louder and then trash started blowing around. And that's unacceptable. So she just walked over there, this woman by herself, very tiny woman. And she walks over and she goes, listen, uh, everybody here loves me and respects me and has my back. And you guys are doing dummy drugs, you're loud, and you're making a fucking mess. And it stops right now. You stop all that shit. You clean up this mess. And you get rid of the fucking drugs. You get rid of the idiots. And you quiet the fuck up. Or you get the fuck out of here right now. And they did. They fucked off. Now they went to the other side of Three Peaks. This community. And the neighbors went over to them. And were like. Angie told you to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. They fucked off. And I don't know where they are now. Maybe they're somewhere where we're not paying attention. But. That's the kind of community it is, where this cute little woman was like, nah, we're not having this shit. You get the fuck out, and they did. 
That's fucking beautiful. It is. it is. I mean, that's that's community. Because she wasn't lying. I love that woman with all my heart. And if she told me that these people need to go, I'll go over there with a fucking gun and get them out. I, get them the fuck out of there. You know. Put the fear of God into them. I mean, I don't give a shit. Change a gun and stuff. I mean, but you need it. Like, you just need it. So, like, I there's a mobile mechanic friend of mine, and he's great. But the first time he came out to my house, he had a sidearm. And uh, I see the holster, but I don't see the gun. But the girl in his car has got the gun on me the whole fucking time. Because she doesn't know. This could be a trap. I could be robbing and murdering him. But then, like, he's my friend now. So they don't bring the gun anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I know. I love it. Like I, I just uh, fucking love it. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely visit in the summer if I had. Um, what if I showed up in your town? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> with like looking like a fed, like a narc, like a men in black, driving a Tesla. Okay. I, I had something built that was a little audacious <laughs> for the other. Uh, you know. Uh, Flop houses that you build out there. I had like a nice uh, two story with a deck, but, <laughs> but I kept to myself. You're fine. I had a Bison freeze that I walked and I picked up and spoop. Yeah. And then I was nine to five. You could count on me coming in and out. You're okay. All right. As long as you don't fuck with anybody else. Like there's Teslas out there, there's million dollar homes. I mean, it's a ski no, resort the, town. No, in the fucking slab city. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. No, I want to build like a giant thing right in the middle. I, <laughs> my joke, like when I, when I, I pick up every hitchhiker because I want to, I, I hitchhike and I want to meet my neighbors, and it's a great way to do it. And everybody's cool when they need a ride. But like, I'll tell every one of them, I'll fuck with them, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I bought the shit. I, t- I bought the shit from Linda, you know." And I keep telling them, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna develop all this. I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna be all condos, <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna have like five condos." Per quarter acre, and it's gonna be a million dollars each, and you just see their the rate. But, but like, but I'm the comic who lives in town, so everybody knows I'm full of yeah. shit. And he's the comic that's playing tonight, not the night that you you won't see this until uh, it's way too late. Yeah. But he is playing unknowingly. He is playing in town tonight in Bisbee for the guy who is trying to build condos out of historical structures. Okay. And that was the guy. Who's that's the guy? I've never, uh, I've never met him, but uh, well, I probably won't be invited back because I'm going to yes, shit on him. Yes, you will, because you are sitting on the stage of our under the fucking off the grid, yeah. under the weather, off the radar stage. This yeah. is a Murphy stage. Oh, it's yeah. right up into this wall, <laughs> and then we put you know thirty seats in here, yeah. and uh, the lighting and the mic and the stand, and you'll play here next this, time. This is a beautiful yeah. venue. I can't wait. All right. Chad Ryden, we'll give him your uh, 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 socials. Uh, it's Chad, C-H-A-D-R-I-D-E-N, everywhere on the internet. Please go to my website, fucktexas.org. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, you do. <laughs> All right. Woo-hoo. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> 48 minutes. <laughs>